Hackers have been taking over websites for years and these types of attacks are getting easier and easier and more common thanks to all the open source tools that are out there nowadays. And I'm not talking about just bug bounties where hackers are able to hack companies like Uber, Twitter, GitHub, GitLab, you name it, finding these subdomain takeovers and reporting it for bounties anywhere from a hundred to a couple of thousand dollars. That's still the case. In some cases, we'll still see them happen. But recently, there was also news of companies hacking a subdomain of Ferrari and hosting NFT scams on there and probably making a lot of money from it. So who knows how many other companies have been hacked this way. If you're a red teamer, this could be a gold mine for you. You can make your phishing attempts easier because you have a .target.com, wherever your target is, you have a domain on there or a subdomain on there, or even better, a whole entire environment on there. So it could happen two different ways. The easy way and the old school way of just a subdomain, it's a C name takeover. It's usually where you point a domain to a third party service. This could happen in three different ways. One is you, you forget to register your organization. So it's sitting there, no one's claimed it. The hacker finds and they claim it. There's a typo. And the third one is the obvious one. You delete the organization, it goes away. And I think after three months, you're able to claim it uh, from a new user's perspective. So that's the old school way of doing it. It's been around for years and GitHub isn't the only one. Uh, there is actually a repo thanks to Ed Overflow, maybe Live Overflow, one of the two. Ed Overflow, he has a good uh, GitHub page on his uh, GitHub repository that's called Can I Take Over X, Y, and Z? And it tells you which ones can take over, which one's an edge case, and which ones have been fixed. And to be honest, so many of these have been fixed because so many hackers were taking over subdomains, especially with bug bounties, that these companies put something in place to prevent it. But that's not to say it's not doable. There is still a way to do it, but there's a second way that I wanna talk about mostly during this video, and that is taking over an entire name server uh, through Route 53 or other methods of doing this. But before we do this, I wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor for the video, and we'll jump right into it and show you how you can take over an entire name server in just a few minutes. I would like to thank Sneak for sponsoring this video. There are a ton of vulnerabilities out there from SQL injection, cross-site scripting, template injection, and remote command execution, to name a few. And of course, if you're exploiting them ethically, they are really, really, really fun to look for. But they're not so fun if they are in your own code or applications. That's where Sneak comes in. It automatically scans your code, dependencies, containers, and config files, and it finds vulnerabilities within them in real time. So here's how easy it is. Sign up for free using my link on the screen or go to sneak.co slash nahomsec, import your repos. These could be the repos that you own or if you are doing research or participating in a bug bounty program and you have access to the source code, you can also import them into Sneak and then you allow it to look for vulnerabilities and just fix them with just one click. You can also create fixed PRs directly through their dashboard and fix your vulnerabilities. Plus, it does all this from your existing tools like your IDE, CLI, Docker Hub, and more. So check it out for yourself and see if there are any vulnerabilities in your projects. Again, it is 100% free. Use my link, sign up, and scan your projects. Imagine you're finished doing your scans. You have collected a bunch of domains. Don't worry if you don't know how to do this. Go watch the last episodes of Attack Surface Management on my channel. But let's say you have done this and we have a bunch of domains here. And again, for this video, I'm using my own domain as an example just to make it easier, but we're gonna get right to it. And you can see that there are a bunch of different domains in here with hackwithnohomstech.com. There's a main domain, there's API, there's api.hackathon2021.hackwithnohomstech.com. There's a leaderboard behind it, API, and so on. So there's a list of these. Again, you can automate a lot of this. Uh, it, it, you should automate a lot of this because it will save you time. But again, for the sake of this, we are just going to look at it from a manner perspective because I want you to know how these things works before you jump in and using tools and automating and using scripts. We're gonna use the host command and we're gonna ask it to type out uh, all the name servers belonging to this domain or this particular subdomain. So right here I can see that there is a hackathon 2021 that has a bunch of different subdomains behind it, which means that some third party service may be controlling their name servers to make it easier or they may be pointing it to a custom name servers. We don't know that, but Based on seeing this, I can see that they're using a environment and they're creating more subdomains behind it. And a lot of different companies and a lot of bug bunnies I've seen, typically they're using Google, Amazon, or Azure, and they're using them to control the name servers and create more subdomains and zones. So we're gonna look at this one internal. Again, this is, I've created this example. I know it's vulnerable. We're gonna type it in and we see that it comes back and says 
an X domain. And we're going to do that one more time. That's not the error we wanted to get. Mm, hold on. And again, so this is the internal one. Nothing comes back. Maybe we don't have access to it. Maybe it's because it's already been taken down. So, um, but there's also hackathon. We're going to try this one. Actually, we're going to do leaderboard. And this time I'm going to type host dash T and S. And it's going to come back and say, sir, fail. This is what you want to see. You want to see an error or a sir, fail come up. That means that the DNS exists, but we can't reach whatever it's pointing to, or it's not pointing to something that it's reachable at the moment. So the difference between these two is this one we can't access, doesn't exist more than likely. And then this one is there's an error, there was a failure, there is something there, but we can't fully connect to it. So we want to make sure that we find those name servers. We want to know what it points to. You can use dig for this. If we do dig, it comes back. There's nothing there. We can still see the serve fail come back. We're going to have to do another dig this time. But this time, we're going to remove the subdomain from this. And we're going to just look at Hackathon 2021 and see if anything comes up. Same thing, it's serve fail. So that means that it is pointing to something, but we can't see what it is. Uh, and right here, it doesn't come up with anything. So if this did exist, it will give us a name servers right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a dig plus trace. Trace will look downwards from the root domain and trace it all the way downwards and tell us what it points to. So we're going to do hackathon 2021 again. Looks like I have been right. Let me then. There we go. So we're going to do 888. For some reason, it wasn't giving me dig that trace, but here we can see that it's doing this thing. It's coming back. It was pointing to Google because that's what I registered it. And then right here at the bottom, we can see that it's showing us these four name servers that were created on Amazon. So this is a good indication that at some point, or maybe still to this day, these are pointed to these AWS name servers. And now using the tool, what we wanna do is we wanna brute force for these. So it's not as easy as going to Amazon and saying, hey, I have this domain, and I wanna point it to these four name servers. It's not that easy, we wanna have to use a tool but because I want to avoid a strike on YouTube, and to be honest, I want to avoid from people with malicious intent to do this on their own, I'm not going to share this tool. You can go on GitHub, go on Google and find them. There's plenty of them. To be responsible, I don't want to disclose these tools. So if you want them, you're more than welcome to go look for them. But just to make it easier, I'm going to skip over this step where I tell you how to get this tool just to be responsible. Okay, enough of that. Enough being responsible. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our tool and we are going to tell it, hey, I want these four name servers. These are the name servers that it is pointing to, and the domain is this domain. So we're gonna do Hackathon 2021, and we're going to run it. So let's try it again. We're gonna do takeover. There we go. So what's happening in the background is it's connecting to AWS saying, hey, this domain, make a zone for it. It's getting the four subdomains, or the, sorry, the name servers, it's looking and going, are these the four that I'm looking for? Do any of them match? Even if one of them matches, it's going to take it. And if it doesn't, it's going to delete it and recreate it until we get those four. And once this is done, it will make more sense. I will show it to you on AWS as well. But that is the whole goal of this thing is, hey, I have four of these name servers. Can you at least match one of them? I'm going to repeat, delete back and forth until it works. Now that the tool is done, it comes back and says success. All those FTC are the failures. It took that many tries for it to work, but now it says check AWS for more info. As soon as we go to AWS, we go to Route 53, click on this zone. It will bring out our domains and you can see right here, there are the four DNS or the, the routes that we took over. And if we go back and look at it again, we're gonna go right here. We're gonna have a trace again. I wanna show you what the difference is. So right here, as it comes back, we see there's 515. 1760-244-1048. And right here, as you can see, only one of them, the 1760, is the only one that matched. And having that alone by itself makes a huge difference and it works. And the last thing we want to do for all this to work is we want to make a new record or a subdomain, C name, whatever, and point it to a resource recontrol so we can show proof of exploitability. So what we do here is we go back onto our Amazon, we click on create record, I'm going to create a record that's called POC and I'm going to point it to an IP address where I control and it's going to create this record. And as soon as it's done, if we go to this, it should load our website that says hello or something like that. And we can do that by going to our terminal and tapping in host and checking in and seeing 
AFC Hackathon 2021 hack with Nahomsek. It's pointing to that domain and we can see it's pointing to that IP address. And hopefully when we type this into our browser and it opens up, it's going to be a message from ours in our server saying, hello world. And as you can see, that worked. And it shows that we have successfully taken over this record and we can host whatever we want on it. There are a few things that we need to talk about. Uh, there are rumors that Amazon AWS is fixing this, but don't limit yourself to this. There are some times that typos happen. There are times where the domain where they're hosting their name servers expires. You can claim those and do a similar trick like the one that I showed you. All right, that's it. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, please, please, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, drop me a comment and let me know if these videos are helpful and if you want me to make more of these videos and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.